Louise, I'm the chair of Nottingham People Assembly, Nottingham People's Assembly, um, and uh, we've organised this discussion tonight around the EU debate, which I'm sure lots of you have been following and thinking about. So our final speaker is Patricia, and she's speaking for out. Um, thank you, and thanks for the invitation to be here tonight. Um, as you know from my accent, I'm not actually English, I'm from Ireland, but I was asked by Green Leaves to come over here uh, to help with the campaign because of our experience in Ireland, where we're one of the few countries that has had a vote on almost every referendum. Uh, treaty change except the most recent one on the European Stability Mechanism. But um, if I could just start first, I mean I come from the peace movement and disarmament movement, that's how I got involved in the whole EU issue to begin with and I'll, I'll touch on that later on. But it, just this idea of unaccountable elites, yes indeed they are the problem and in actual fact the unaccountable elites are within the EU. The EU is democratically flawed from the foundation up. The European Commission which is appointed is the only body that can initiate legislation. It is not accountable to anybody. Ex and then you have the Council of Ministers. Yes, it's true the Parliament has been given co-decision. I was in the Parliament for 10 years. And I have to admit, at one stage I did think maybe it was possible that the EU could be reformed. But I'm afraid my experience has shown me, number one, it can't be reformed because there is no will, first of all, within the political establishment to do it. Secondly, this is the EU treaties as it now currently exists. The only way you can get any changes to that is via the 28 member states actually saying, agreeing, come to an agreement that they will make an amendment, then they make an amendment, then it has to go back to every single national parliament for that to be ratified before the treaty can be changed. And there is no chance, uh, in my honest belief, there is no chance that David Cameron is going to get the so-called promises he asked for. He came back here and he said to you he'd got an opt-out on ever closer union. It's enshrined in the treaties and the only way he's going to get that is if the other 27 member states agree to it and they won't because all of the other member states when their governments try and negotiate some changes, the citizens are going to say, hold on, we want some changes here as well. So it's completely, I think, disingenuous of David Cameron to say that he has actually got something. He hasn't got it yet and he won't get it either. That's in my opinion. But secondly, in relation to the EU Commission, you have, and in relation to the EU institutions, there is a huge amount of unaccountable dem elites out there. They're at this moment dictating how you should vote. You cannot hold the EU decision makers to account. It's very different to your national parliament where you can hold them to account. And yes, it's true, you may not get the kind of policy you want. And in most cases you don't. But the one thing you do have the opportunity is at the next election of voting them out. We have a situation now in Ireland where the politicians come knocking on our doors. We complain about the various different things that we have, like lack of hospitals, lack of childcare, lack of this, the other. And they turn around and say, oh, it's not our fault because we can't do this via the EU. And that's a very important issue that how do you, why elect politicians if you cannot hold them to account? And that's one of the fundamental flaws within the EU structure. And that is not changeable under the treaties as they are. And there is no way that they're going to actually amend that back because it never was the case. Uh, now, the interesting thing is that very few countries in the EU have had any opportunity of has say in what direction Europe is going in. There have been, yes, there's been reform of the treaties and changes to the treaties, but all in the wrong direction. It's become more and more centralised. Every single change, every single treaty change there was, gave more and more power from national parliaments to the EU, and there is no denying that that is a reality. And then, how many countries got the right to vote? Ireland has said is the only country when the EU constitution was put on the table, the French and the Dutch voted against it. And what happened? They took that EU constitution back, they repackaged it, in fact they actually expanded it and put in over 7,000 more words into it, but they said it was a slimmed down version according to Nicolas Sarkozy. Do you know how they got the slimmed down version? They had over 700,000 words more in it, but it was 55 pages shorter because they reduced the font size and took out the line spacing.